on an Grid Gaming here, and today I am back in the redstone testing world. Now, I have done a lot of different redstone designs here in previous videos, but th these are only good for those of you who actually know how to redstone. And yes, I just made redstone a verb by making a lot of things verbs lately. So, today I'm going to be teaching those of you who don't know what redstone is or don't know how to use it, the basics of redstone. Let's just jump right into it. First, let's start with what is redstone. Redstone is a sort of wiring that you use to connect up different things with each other. There are three different types. There are usually three different types of redstone. Okay, so hang on. There are three basic types. There we go, that's better. Three basic types of redstone. There is the power supply, for example, a lever, the conductor, redstone dust, and the output, for example, a piston. You use these three to connect it. You connect each other together. So here we have we have a input or a redstone power supply, some redstone conductor, which is just with redstone dust, and a piston. Now, you see that you, when you use the power supply, it lights up the redstone dust. The redstone dust carries a signal over to the piston, which extends it. There is one other type of block, which is more advanced, which is the logic. There are different, there's uh, just a couple different logic blocks. There's the comparator and the repeater. Both of these also act as conductors, but they can be used in several different ways that adds logic. The repeater can is not purely logic. It can also be used as a pulse extender. What it does is when the redstone dust runs out of runs out of power, it will resupply the power. For example, redstone dust only carries power for 12 blocks. See, look here, powered, no longer powered. But what the repeater does is it takes the power and renews it. But it comes with a cost of a very slight delay. The repeater can also be used to just add delay. It can be set to different amounts of delay just by the ticks. This is one tick, two ticks, three ticks, and four ticks. It always has to have a tick of delay. So now my redstone signal can go a lot farther before running out. I will not be going into any of the l serious logic parts of the redstone, but I will be teaching you the basics of what everything does. First, we'll start with the conductors. Actually, we should start at the beginning. Let's start at the beginning. We'll start with the power supplies. Levers, buttons, trip wires, redstone torches, pressure plates. Let's get a normal pressure plate. And comparators. These are all the basic power supplies of redstone. Now actually we should probably grab a wooden pressure plate. There we go. These are all the basic power supplies. We need a block for this one wire hook, then a resident torch, pressure plate, pressure plate, and a comparator. So, you've, you've already seen the lever. What the lever does is it puts out, it's a toggleable output of redstone. On, off, on, off. It puts out a redstone signal of 15. That means the redstone the redstone is fully powered and will travel for, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, before going dead. Before I might have said 12, that, that was wrong. I had forgotten about the powers. So, the, but, the level of power output, there might be some that give a weaker power. The, the stone button is a temporary power output, which also outputs a power level of 15, but it's temporary. The wooden does the same, the wooden button does the same thing. 
However, it keeps it keeps the power for slightly longer. If you can see the difference there. The trip wire is a uh, is a is a redstone power supply that is activated sometimes without the player even knowing it. What you do is you use the trip wire and hook up string. with another trip wire and it makes a little click noise now when you step on top of it it gives a power output of 15 when you move off of it the power goes away it's easy for traps now the redstone torch is a solid power it always gives power now there are some different circumstances but the redstone torch is usually for direct power. It can also be turned off by giving it by inputting power onto the block that is that is sitting on. This button is powering the block that the redstone torch is sitting on and the redstone torch deactivates. The pressure plate only gives power when the player is on top of it. it gives 15 power. Wooden pressure plate does the same. However, I think it stays activated slightly longer amount of time. Okay, now they're actually the same. I was wondering if it's the same as buttons, but I guess not. The comparator is the most complicated basic power output. What you do is you connect it to a um, you connect it to a storage device, a chest, a hopper, a dispenser, and it gives out power based on how many items are in the, in the thing. For example, if I take a bunch of string, see now it's activated. Now, it doesn't give out much unless you fill it up. Right now, there's one out of 15 parts filled in this chest. Now, if I do this, the power actually gets a lot more strong. And once you fill the chest up, it gives a full power of 15. Let's see, how do you do that? The, those are all the basic power supplies. I was just wondering how to completely clear your inventory. I figured it out. All right. Next, we have the redstone conductors. We have redstone wire, repeaters, observers, and oh, redstone torches, and blocks. Now, redstone, we'll just use a lever for the example. Redstone conductors take a redstone signal and deliver it. Redstone dust is instantaneous, but l only lasts a couple blocks. Repeaters either renew the redstone signal after it's dying, or they can ju they delay the redstone signal. If you watch the power, if you watch the redstone down at the end. You'll see there is a delay before it activates and deactivates. They renew it and delay it. You mostly used for delaying or renewing of incredibly long um, r lines of redstone. Observers are used for noticing block updates. They can be used to carry the signal, but they can also detect updates. The f little face faces a block. Once that block is updated, it gives out a one tick redstone pulse. Watch the redstone at the end. You can also use observers to consist the entire line of redstone. You do this. See the flash down there. 
Then we have redstone torches, which are mainly used for upward and diagonal. You have to power the block. You can either send the signal straight up. And then it comes out of here. Or you can send the signal diagonally like this. And then it comes out right here. Now if you watch, you pull the lever. It, that is on now and that is on. When you turn the lever off, it turns off. Then we have blocks. Blocks can be used to transmit redstone signals. They just can't. For example, this will not trans transmit a redstone signal. Blocks can be used to turn corners or things like that. You, what you do, run a repeater into the block, then take a redstone signal out of the block. There's absolutely no redstone connecting these, but all of this redstone will turn on. Uh, transparent blocks like glass, glowstone, slime blocks don't transmit redstone signals. Actually, slime blocks might. But glass and glowstone and sea lanterns don't transmit stuff redstone signals. Neither do slabs and stairs. That is all for the conductors. Next we have the outputs. The out different outputs, there are many, many different outputs. There's I'll just give you some of the basic ones. Pistons, sticky pistons, dispensers, TNT, we have droppers, um, doors. I'll just do iron doors, iron trap doors, redstone lamps. That's pretty much all of the main useful ones. Now I'll grab a lever and show you what I mean. Piston, sticky piston, dispenser, TNT, I'm gonna just put this like way over here. Dropper, door, trap door, and redstone lamp. Pistons and sticky pistons do almost the same thing. This pushes a block upward. Let's replace the TNT. Pushes the block upward, but doesn't pull it back down. Sticky pistons push the block upward. Here, I'll just add a lever for all of these. Sticky pistons push the block upward and retract it back down. Dispensers fire a, fire a item out of it. For example, I can put my redstone lamp in and it shoots it out. But they also will, will interact with things like TNT, arrows, and potions. For example, I can put 64 arrows into my dispenser. It will fire the arrows. Droppers only drop things out. For example, they can spit an arrow out as an item instead of firing it. I don't really need to show you the concept. It's almost the same as a dispenser. Doors open, close, open, close. You can't open them with your hand. Apparently you can play stuff like that. That is super cool. I, I never realized that happened. Trap door open, close, open, close. Iron ones, you can't. Same, same with iron doors, you can't open them with your hand. Lamps on, off, on, off, on, off. They take about, they take a couple takes to turn off. That's pretty much all of redstone. Now you can connect these all together to make redstone circuits. You can make redstone doors, all kinds of different things. Now I. There are several more parts of redstone that I did not talk about. For example, there's lots of comparator and repeater logic that you can do, and different things with droppers and chests. Oh, yeah, and I forgot about the TNT. Everybody knows what TNT does. Makes a hole. That was a perfect hole. So, that's all for the Basic Redstone tutorial. I hope this tutorial helped you in building your redstone contraptions. I hope it taught, and if 
you're new to redstone, I hope it helps you understand what redstone is. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.